Hello everybody and welcome back to Beyond Two Souls. We are back in the Navajo chapter and we are continuing on with today's chores. It looks like Jay needs a bit of help with the horses, so this is where we'll start. Let's see what Jay's doing. Proud and stubborn. Never wants to go in with the others. Do you mind if I try? You worked with horses before? No. <laughs> go right ahead. His name's Ashki. Alrighty, let's show Jay how it's done. Hey there, Ashki. Don't be afraid, I'm just gonna come over there, okay? Obviously, we're gonna massage the results a little bit. Hi, buddy. It's okay. See, I'm can... friendly. It's not so bad, is Please it? don't kick me in the face. Admit it. You kind of like me, huh? <laughs> hey, Aiden. Ever dreamed of riding a horse? All right. Interesting that you can not only possess people, but you can also possess animals and any living thing, it looks like. Take him to the enclosure. Hopefully this will impress Jay a little bit and help him warm up to us by giving him a hand. How'd you do that? We all have our secrets, right? Maybe I misjudged you. If you want to take a shower, it's behind the bar. Ladies first. It's fine by me. That would be great. I imagine it's incredibly dusty and incredibly hot. And I'm sure a shower would feel absolutely magnificent. All of the day's chores are done. So, let's hop to it. That's creepy. It's like someone's always watching you or somebody's trying to send a message or something. We just don't quite know what's going on just yet. And then the guy left running. And you know what? He was never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know that. You haven't even let me try. Come on, I'm offering to help. I'm putting, you know, myself at risk here. What's the harm in at least trying to help? And telling me not to do it really didn't work out so well the last time, Paul. What makes you think I'm going to listen this time? 
If you try to go to your room, you can see there it won't let you. Jody's just going to sneak right out the front door as soon as the family goes to bed. Nobody's going to tell us anything, so we have to figure out all of this stuff on our own. And it probably gets very, very cold in the desert at nighttime. Probably a little bit uncomfortable being out here. That looks like one hell of a sandstorm. My god. Maybe it's not a good idea to be out here, Jody. What on earth is that thing? Those are those spirits we keep seeing. Looks like one of the guys that was in the shower with us. I think Jody also saw one at the front door when she opened the door on the first night. So here we have a chase scene, trying to get away from this sandstorm entity spirit thing, whatever the hell it is. And if you manage to do this section and you make less than three mistakes, you get a trophy for it. So all you really have to do here is just go through the motions. I think it's kind of hard to run a sandstorm, but now that we're out here and we didn't follow instructions, we really only have ourselves to blame. We just have to do what we can to try and survive this and hopefully the sandstorm subsides. Go, Jody, go! Oh, shit. That is probably the biggest entity that we've seen so far. If that's even what it is, that's what it seems like to me, but... How do you outrun something like this? It's everywhere. And obviously it's very, very upset with us, very angry, and I'm assuming it's also evil if it keeps coming back to the farmhouse every single night. seem like they're good though, the ones that are trying to communicate with us. There's some sort of maybe spiritual battle or something going on. Very interesting. Jody! Jody, I told you to stay in your room. You could have been killed. What's happening here? What was that thing? You should have listened to me. Stayed in your room. You have to tell me the truth. You have to tell me the truth now. I'm in too deep. It's Yeitzo. He wants blood. That's all he's interested in. We can't do anything about it. We can't fight a spirit. Spirits don't live in this world. If he's here, there's a reason. Looks like Ashi's really come around. We're friends, right? gonna put my foot in the stirrup and climb up, okay? He's not so wild and tough like Jay says. To figure out how to go forward. It's not too bad. Look at that. Hey, what do you think, Ashki? We're doing pretty good, huh? That horse is gonna have to tell me your secret. Listen, I'm headed over the pasture to tend the churros. You wanna come? Sure. 
Let's go. Yeah. I mean, maybe Aiden is in the horse right now, but I don't think that would be possible if Jody was riding it because he can't be touched or he loses control. This chapter is so big and it has so much map to it that you actually have to use the horse to get around. There's no way that you could just walk around on this map and get from point A to point B to where you actually need to go. It just gives you a good idea about how big this area is and how desolate this desert seems. As we can ride along, you can see that there virtually is nothing around except for a lot of rocks, a lot of cactuses, a lot of what you would see in a desert, but no people. And I'm assuming that's maybe because of Yezo. They have their sheep pasture all the way out here. Hopefully the sheep are okay. They seem fine. They seem to have things figured out. Look, I, I know you don't want to talk about it. But I really need to know what happened last night. Come on, Jay. Your father knew the spirit. It's not the first time he's come, right? Yeatso has always been here. It comes at night and steals souls. The old ones used to say, it's a curse. The price our tribe had to pay for living on these lands. Hmm, that's not good. And despite all this, your father never, never wanted to just leave? For him, the spirit is just part of the land. It's like the rocks or the desert sand. It's something you can't change, so you have to learn to live with it. My turn to ask you some questions. What are you really doing out here in the middle of the desert? It feels like you're running away from something. All right, well, that's fair. We've been awfully nosy. I think we, you know, can tell Jay a little bit about what's going on, at least. I'm just trying to forget. You know, make a new start. Maybe I'm just running away from myself. You're like us. You also have your dark secret, don't you, Jody? Oh, you can say that again. I, am. Um... I have to tell you something. I... Never mind, it'll have to wait. That was Paul. There's no water at the ranch. Something must be up with the well. I'm gonna have a look on my way back. I can go take a look if you want. Uh, don't know if you'll be able to do much. I'll do what I can. Well, where's the well? Uh, it's over there. It's got a windmill. Shouldn't be hard to find. Okay. I'll see you back at the ranch. Okay. See you later. Alrighty, let's go take a look and do some problem solving. No water in an area like this would probably be very disastrous. Not a good problem to have whatsoever. But luckily the well isn't that far away. With Aiden's help, I'm sure that whatever the problem is, we'll be able to fix it. Here we are. Ah, tumbleweed. Ah, 
Ah, oh, should be easy for Iden to fix. There we go. Good work, Iden. The pump's running again. Ta-da! Alrighty. Hey, it's that guy again. Or that spirit, or whatever you want to call it. I wonder what this building is. This looks like maybe an old home from one of the tribes that used to live here, or something like that. Logically, the only thing to do is to go inside and have a look around. Although I guess for Jody, she's trying to find as many answers as she possibly can. We've seen those beads before. I do believe that they have several of those inside the home. There's not really much to look at in here. I don't think that there's anything else I can see. All right. Aha. This is a vision from days past. Looks like a lot of people used to live in this desert. And something obviously went terribly, terribly wrong. Okay, Joey. And there's that writing again, crown, which I think is what we also saw in the shower stall written on the wall. But what does it all mean? Perhaps some sort of battle? for some sort of treasure or something. There's only one way to find out. We're gonna ride through the desert and it's a pretty linear path. The desert looks big, but the game kind of tells you exactly where you need to go. It points you in this general direction and then you can just follow the cave all the way through and your next objective will be in plain sight. It's kind of nice to just ride a horse around and have some sort of kind of peaceful environment. For the most part, most chapters we play with Jody are pretty damn stressful. And this one has been stressful too, of course, trying to go through that sandstorm while being attacked and whatnot, but there are a lot of different places in between that are a bit more relaxed and laid back. We've now stumbled across Fort Crown, and this must be what they were talking about. There are several items hidden in the sand that we're going to be able to channel. Can you see any? And we can channel the items and sort of figure out a little bit about what went on in this place. Now, I don't know how long ago this battle took place, but by the looks of it, there have been entities in this place for a very, very long time. So it's obviously not a new problem. It's a shame that Shimashani doesn't talk because I'm sure that she would have some really great insight into 
what has gone on here, assuming that she has lived in this area for a long time as well. think about it that may actually be a good explanation for why she's mute maybe she has seen some really horrible and unspeakable things during all the time that she's lived here and she just doesn't want to speak anymore maybe she's so afraid of the entities and of Yatso. obviously the whole family is afraid of it even paul who seems to have come to grips with Yatso is still relatively afraid, and I'm sure that even though he says there's nothing that can be done, he would still want something to be done, if possible. If you have that spirit knocking on your roof and threatening to kill you every single night of your life, that's got to take a toll after some amount of time. You would be so absolutely trapped and helpless, and what would you do? So if you go to the tree now, there is obviously going to be some more things that we can examine. Some more things in the dirt. And Jody's going to be able to dig up a couple spots here with her hands. Ghosts or wearing these ritual masks. Once you've examined all of the items in the hole, you'll automatically see Aiden point out the other spots. And there's a couple of those medallions that can be picked up. And obviously they have some sort of importance, but we're just not sure what yet. no talisman. We're missing one medallion. know who that baby is because we've seen that blanket before done with this area but before we go you want to take note of the shape that's in the sand here we'll kind of need to make note of that and remember it for later now we can go back to the house and we can ask the family a little bit if they know anything else or they can give us any more information i think this is probably a really good place for me to stop though we will continue on with part three of this chapter in the next video thank you all so very much for watching and i hope that i will see you next time <laughs>